Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me start with a question. Is this a tech conference? Well, yes, uh, it is, but would you say this conference is only about technology? Most probably not. Tech has become, if we consider too important for all of us. No idea is talking about tech means talking about society and technology. And it will not come as a surprise when I say that as a Prime Minister, I don't give very much tech talks. But I will talk about the challenge that I face as the Prime Minister of what I believe is a forward-looking government. And um, fundamentally, we want to be actors of our future, not only to witness technological evolutions from afar. We have to be. Think about the characteristic of the technologies that really break through. If uh, they get invented, they get to the market, and they change the market also forever. It's a bit like the jenny out of the bottle. One, it, if it's out, you can't get it back in. So this has happened time and time, again over the last decades. The only difference is it happens much faster now and even more often. Look at the latest technology headlines telling us about artificial intelligence services. Every day, the tech news talk about this job that is going to disappear or the sector about to be replaced by artificial intelligence software. Only a few days ago did I read that, I read that the Supreme Court of a state in the USA declared that it was legal for a judge to rely on artificial intelligence, on recommendations based on AI in order to help shape their decision in a criminal case. These headlights must produce admiration in the tech community, but believe me, for other people it's like, what is going on? to happen. So more questions than answers. So should we fight these technologies and try to make them disappear or should we try to get a clearer picture of their impact and see the opportunities? As a country, we should not be afraid of tomorrow. We choose the second option. How do we do that? In my view, there really is only one way and just you said it before me, through education. Education and openness to new horizons and new possibilities. And when I talk about education, I don't mean that we need to make every child a computer scientist. We don't know today what technologies will run the game tomorrow, so how could we teach specific tech skills to our kids? What we know for sure, however, is that in future, technology will be everywhere. And most of all, no single brain, whatever its IQ, will be fast or shape, shape enough to be able to do grasp all of it, nor do great things on its own. So what we need to teach to our kids is, yes, indeed, basic coding skills as part of their everyday surrounding, so that if they choose to be a doctor, a geologist, a bioscientist, a, li a lawyer, or a creative designer, they can easily integrate and even shape the tools that they will need to do their job. But most of all, we need to teach them collaboration skills, social skills, foster their creativity, their out-of-the-box and problem-solving thinking. We also need to continue to teach them foreign languages, at school, continue to build a multicultural Luxembourg like we have today and a multilingual strength so that the next generations continue to be open to other cultures and experiences. These are the skills beyond tech skills that we need to grasp the ever-changing speed of technology. Whether you are from Luxembourg or visiting from abroad for the conference, let me state how central this is for me. Education and openness. We are going to celebrate in two days the 150th anniversary of the Treaty of London, where a country got uh, for the second time his independence. 
What we decided to do at that moment, it was one of the conditions of the signing of the agreement, to take away walls, to open our city. Nowadays, I'm a proud prime minister of a country where nearly half of the population are non-nationals. Where in a city of Luxembourg, nearly 70% of the populations are non-Luxembourgers. This makes our strengths to be open, to be respectful, to listen, trying to understand. It's not always easy, but to respect. And so sorry to make a link with that. I'm so happy that a few days ago, my neighbor country voted for a candidate who didn't want to build new walls. So um, we need to, to be... This openness is the strength that we, we want. And my government is working hard on it. The Minister of Education is very active in the digital Luxembourg agenda. And new projects like the Luxembourg Tech School, Creative Marker Spaces and Digital for Education are all a new reality in Luxembourg now. The Minister of Labour is also working hand in hand with the Administration of Work to offer technology conversions courses like Fit for Code and Start for and Code to unqualified workers so that they can find new opportunities and reintegrate the active workforce. We support these projects because they deliver quick, tangible results and are able to equip people of all ages with the skills they needed. I'm uh, also very happy that I'm, as a Prime Minister, I'm in charge of the digital agenda. This was uh, also an important um, a topic to do, because a lot of projects are on the way for the moment, and we need to do, as a public and a private sector, hand in hand, a work together. I know very often private sector says, public sectors and the administration make this life hard. But we need you, and you need us. We need, sometimes people say, yeah, don't do too much regulation. We need also trust, especially with the example I just gave you before, what happened in the States. I have a social responsibility. I have a political responsibility, too. And so it is important, and it's also in the interest of the digital agenda, that we don't lose the trust of the consumers, and that they don't get the feeling that we are doing things against them, but we're doing things with them. It is a huge opportunity, the digital revolution. But it has, we have to fight that it will be, for some people, in their beliefs, a social revolution. As I just said before, we know that we are going to lose some jobs. But we are going to create new jobs. But we just need to be prepared for those new jobs. And so for me, it is very important that together with the private sector, we are joining efforts to form a coalition of the willing amongst partners and launch a national digital skills coalition to prepare the future. The launch will be on May 29th, and I invite you all to join, so this leaves you some days to visit my country. We will bring together all interested parties, social partners, private companies, academia and the government, to launch a platform that will develop concrete actions to the benefit on the job market. But our strengths lie, and I will continue to lie, in the openness that has always characterized my country. We have to keep teaching our kids that openness, collaboration, creativity, teamwork will be the most important skills that they need in the future. An open and collaborative mind will always be able to adapt and should not be afraid of the future. We embrace new technologies with a digital mindset and tackle challenges in a horizontal manner. Digital Lützburg, our horizontal government initiative, is what enables us to structure the future and bring the digitalization to the next level. Clearly, innovation is not something that happens just because anybody delivers long speeches. It happens because we put in place legal frameworks take political decisions, allocate funds, and push things forward. Our main job as government is policy making. Ladies and gentlemen, that is why one of the key objectives of Digital Luxembourg aims to fostering a digital reflex or digital by default in all politic policy initiatives we take. After all, digital transformation is also about rethinking policy making to implement legislation and policy changes in a timely manner. And as I just said before, 
it was one of my goals when I started as a Prime Minister to have the digital agenda also on my level. We very often think like a silo mentality. Everybody's got his topic, his power, his decisions to take. And the digital agenda is really one of the best examples of what we call a horizontal competence. And so it makes it easier in my government as Ministry of Communication to convince the Prime Minister. But this is not always the case with other countries. Very often in my colleagues, when we have telecom meetings, they tell me I have to convince my Prime Minister because I have my colleague minister from this or this or this. He wants, he thinks it's his topic. So it makes it easier when you're also Prime Minister. <laughs> so I'm uh, amazed to discover that uh, ICT Spring, dear ladies and gentlemen, has managed once again to unite a large number of leading experts and interesting companies here in Luxembourg. It has become one of the key ICT events in the greater region and beyond. And it has become so much more than just a conference about the ICT sector. And I don't mean that only as a reference to the Space Forum, which again hosts excellent speakers this year. And for the one who doesn't know, you know, my country is uh, much bigger in the space than on Earth. We have, and I just saw Karim Sabak who from SES. This is a, a company when we started in the 80s to do satellites. Some people thought that prime ministers and government should visit the shrink. But we did it. And nowadays we are all proud about it. I see Georges Schmidt here, who is one of the initiators of the, spice, of the space mining uh, activity. These are things we want to do. We want to be ready for the next big thing. And to be, as I said, now with the satellites and after with the space activities, we will be much bigger. Um, over our head than under our head. But you have to realize, and I gave the example, I think it was two years ago, I gave the example here. We should never forget where we come from. My country was a farmer country. And um, we discovered steel. We have ArcelorMittal, biggest steel company in the world, based in Luxembourg now. But we realized that it won't be forever. So we decided to create media. RTL. For a lot of you, RTL, what is the link? The L is for Luxembourg. It's one of the biggest media group in Europe nowadays. And what I'm even more proud about it, when we had an iron curtain during years dividing Europe, RTL was the radio of liberty. It was the radio where people on the other side of the curtains were able to listen to free news. It was the first radio where the Beatles played, etc., etc., etc. And then we had the SES, and then we had the finance also, where we started to be a capital, a European capital of finance. And now with London, we were the two most active European capitals in finance. Soon we will be the only one <laughs> in Europe, <laughs> Union. They are still our neighbor. They're not anymore our family member. They want a divorce. I deeply regret the choice of the UK, but we have to respect it. We don't have to punish them, but they decided, so it is important to respect the decision and to find a uh, good agreement in the interest of both. We were partners, we are partners, and we still need to be partners. So never forget where you come from and when you are able to arrive. And in Luxembourg, we have a maxim, you know, this sentence where you say you are very proud in the tradition sentence. And it is, that means we want to stay what we are. That doesn't mean that we want to stay where we are. So let's do it together, work together. I'm proud of being a prime minister of a country where we are proud of our history, about what we did. But we are even prouder about what we will be able to do in future. Let's do it together. Thank you.